Howdy, everybody. Um, as you can, I'm sure, tell from the video title, I am here to do a q and A. I I asked if you guys wanted to do a QA and a because I have a lot of new subscribers and I didn't know if you guys had watched all my old videos or a lot of people came from my one year recap video uh, where I didn't talk a ton about myself. Um, so yeah, everybody seemed really excited for a Q&A video. Um, I have my phone here and a whole list of all the questions that you guys um, asked me. I know a lot of Q&As, they'll like put up the question like and who asked it and everything. I am not there with video editing. So you guys are just going to have to trust me that these questions were asked. <laughs> um, and so fittingly, one of the first questions was, I've been wondering if you would introduce yourself a bit, like a summary of my life so far for people who have only watched my homestead videos. So a little bit about myself. My name is Heather. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, I am originally from Washington State, Eastern Washington to be specific. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that Eastern Washington is not like Twilight. Uh, it's a lot of wheat fields and farming community. I grew up riding horses. My dad had a huge garden. I grew up in the middle of nowhere. Um, I'm not one of those people who were in the city and decided to quit the rat race or whatever and move out to the country. I tried YouTube several times now and uh, you can see old videos pre-homestead of some of my attempts at YouTube. So really I started the first time when I moved to Germany to do my master's degree. I did a master's of finance, so trust that all the finances of all of this are being done well. <laughs> Uh, cause I do have a very expensive degree in finance, uh, for it. That was kind of like the first iteration of YouTube. Then after that, I joined the corporate world back in America. And, um, shortly after that, my student loans came due and I couldn't afford both rent and my student loans because of that expensive degree. Um, and so I moved into a van and I did van life. And there's a handful of videos up on the channel way back of me doing like the whole van life thing. That's a little crash course of my life up until now. And there's some more specific questions about the house that I will get into here. And the first one, how did I find my property? Well, I, I really was looking anywhere in the country um, theoretically, <laughs> really in reality, it was narrowed down to places that were pretty warm in the winter. I definitely didn't want to be anywhere that it was going to be below freezing during the winter. Um, I just personally don't enjoy that. Uh, I know that means then that the summers are going to be really hot, but I'm a lizard. I love the heat. You know that feeling when you open your car door in the middle of the summer and you get in before you got your air going or anything and you just feel like you're in an oven? I love that feeling. I will just sit there and just go, ooh, this is nice. Um, so yeah, I am totally a desert person. So I knew I wanted the deserts, which obviously rules out pretty much all of the East Coast, all of the all of the northern half of the United States. Uh, I basically was kind of at that point in the Southern California, Arizona, like Southern half of Utah or Nevada basically was kind of the range that I was feasibly gonna consider. I traveled around in the van for a long time and was kind of scoping out a lot of places when I did that. Um, there was a property in Arizona uh, that I really, really seriously considered. It had nothing on it. It, it had no house or anything. Um, and I was considering doing like the, um, either the air Crete or the straw bale builds, you know, something totally off grid and totally sustainable. Um, but then I found out that, um, even though it was super rural, the county itself didn't distinguish between the cities and the unincorporated areas. And so even the unco unincorporated areas, for zoning um, and building codes were held to the same standards as the cities. So that was a big bummer. Um, basically that meant that for me to be able to do any sort of alternative building, I would have to have like engineer approvals, which would have been a lot of work and a lot of money uh, that I basically just balked at. So where I'm located is going to remain a secret. If anybody watching this video recognizes that mountain or recognizes where I'm at from my videos, 
please respect my privacy. Please respect my safety. You never know who's on the internet. You never know who's watching this. So please, if you recognize me and you want to reach out or you're local, please utilize an email or a direct message. Um, don't put it in the comments. Don't share that information. If I find that in the comments, it will be deleted. The closest I am willing to give people for my location is that I'm in the Mojave Desert. That's a very large geographic area, but the Mojave Desert geographically or ecologically is all very similar. So in terms of, you know, people wanting to give me advice or people wanting to understand what my climate is, if you Google what the Mojave Desert climate is, if you Google anything about the Mojave Desert, it's gonna apply to me. I think that's close enough. I think that's good enough for the strangers on the internet to know about where I'm at. So more specifically, somebody asked, why did I choose this area? Um, first of all, property prices were realistic. I can could afford not most of the properties here, but there was an ab abandoned pot farm, you know, the bottom of the barrel pricing wise that I was able to afford. I was very picky about lot size or being adjacent to BLM land. So um, for people who are not from like, you know, the Southwest United States, you might not know what BLM land is. Um, it's not Black Lives Matter. <laughs> it's a Bureau of Land Management, um, which has been around for like 100 years plus probably. Um, and they own a lot of land in the uh, Western, Southwestern part of the United States. And basically, um, BLM land is free land for anybody to use Typically the rule is for 14 days consecutively and then you have to move on. And when you're living in a van, you do that a lot. Like that's basically where I lived for two years was this piece of BLM land and then moved on to that piece of BLM land. And that's kind of what the whole via, the whole van life community does. I really wanted 10 to 20 acres. I settled on five because I am adjacent to several large parcels of BLM land, which means that I won't have neighbors there. They're not ever gonna do anything with that land. It's just empty because of my finances. I needed a USDA loan. Um, so if you're not familiar with a USDA loan, USDA loans are zero down. So um, you don't have to put 5% or anything down. And basically if your house appraised below what um, you were approved for, for the loan, then you could even put your carrying costs, your closing costs into um, the loan and pay nothing out of pocket. Um, I didn't get to do that. I My house appraised for right at what my loan was available for. And so I had to pay closing costs out of pocket and that was pretty much all of my money. <laughs> so yeah, how did I choose the area? I liked the area, it was warm. The parcel itself checked out um, because it was adjacent to BLM land, even though it was a bit smaller than I wanted. Um, and then, yeah, people are super nice. People are super friendly. I really like my neighbors, things like that. Uh, so it just kind of all lined up. Proximity to town and family. Great question. Proximity to town. When you're in rural places, technically town is 10 minutes away. The closest town to me has a post office. That's it. <laughs> it's not a town, um, but it is a town. The closest town for me to actually get groceries and do stuff in is about a half hour away. Proximity to family, I have no one here. My family is all still in Washington. That's about 2,000 miles away. 2,000 was a guesstimate. It's probably 3,500 kilometers, 3,500 kilometers-ish, maybe closer to four. I typically fly if I'm going to visit them because my vehicles really don't want to do that long of a trip anymore. If I do drive up, which I have before, and it's in one of those videos um, on my channel, uh, it takes me several days. I usually stop, camp, sleep, wake up the next day. I'm usually working also. So yeah, it's I'm not close to family. Um, and the only person from my family who has seen this property or been here has been my dad, who was here for like four-ish days, um, helping me move all of my stuff out of my storage unit, um, and bring it here so I could stop paying for the storage unit. Um, and then while he was here, he helped me dug up my septic line so we could replace the whole main septic line. Since I mentioned it, we'll go into job. Uh, I don't want to divulge too much about my job. I'll say that I work remote. I am salaried. My current job is really great because my bosses are really understanding. If I don't have a lot of work, I'm happy to go and work on all of the homestead and everything. And that's where I have been able to have time to get a lot of work done. 
Um, and obviously when I have a lot of work, I don't have a lot of time to work on the homestead. So yeah, uh, I have a salary job that is full-time remote and that's, that's what you get to know about my job. Okay. A lot of people are interested about like utilities. So my water source, I'm actually on city water, even though I'm all the way out here, it's really crazy. The city water is way down there. Um, so my water pressure is kind of not great, uh, because it has to go uphill for a long ways, but I'm on city water. Um, this house was on hauled water before that. And that's what that big tank was, um, that I got rid of was the hauled water tank just to get it out of the way. Now, yes, I plan to do rainwater collection. Um, it's just not a high priority. If you haven't noticed, I don't have a full garden yet or anything yet either. So my, the amount of water that I'm using for like watering plants or anything that I would use a rain barrel for is actually pretty, um, insignificant. I was at one point collecting my gray water from my washing machine and that water was actually just going rancid in the barrel because I wasn't using it fast enough. So I've actually re-diverted that to a little pond system for it to soak in and everything. And of course I'm using um, wash washing soap that is safe to go directly onto the ground and stuff like that. I know a lot of people in the seeing that it's a desert get really upset that I like, for example, I had the swimming pool or that I dumped the swimming pool water on the ground. Um, that water all collected in one spot that a desert willow has now sprouted up in. And also for that specific example of the pool, I for like three days took a bucket to that pool and watered my aloe and used that water to um, soften the soil where in places where I was digging posts up and watered my new plants um, from the native plant society. So uh, like for like three days, I did pull water out of that pool before I started just chucking it on the ground. So I am very conscious of water usage and water usage in the desert. That's water, um, septic. I have a septic system. I'm not on city septic. That doesn't come out here. Um, the electricity, I'm on city electricity. I would like solar panels at some point in time. Uh, again, I have a lot of money to spend elsewhere before I'm gonna put money into solar panels because I am on the grid. I guess that that kind of transitions us over to everybody asking about permaculture. Yes, I am interested in permaculture. Um, I think the thing that people need to realize is that I am actually in a desert. Like this is not someplace that's just brown and dry. It's actually a desert. I think it rained four times this year. And it rains a lot when it does rain for sure. But a lot of people are looking, for example, in one of my videos, you can see that the wash runs through it. It's a wash, it's not a dry creek bed. A wash is just when all the rain hits the ground, it can't absorb fast enough. And so the water accumulates and the land is sloped and it just runs. And it runs into a wash, basically. It's a place where the water will run when there's a lot of rainfall. Not a dry creek bed, there's a difference. There are dry creek beds out here, but that that's not one of them, it's just a wash. Basically, uh, it has to rain an awful lot before there's any water running down there. We got enough rain in the hurricane this year for there to be any water and it didn't connect all the way through. There wasn't enough water for the water that comes down my road to actually make it past about um, no, 100 feet down the wash before it hit the ground and started to to absorb. A lot of people were, oh, it's a dry creek bed. You need to divert it and make a pond out of it. Uh, it it's, it's not, it's not a dry creek bed. It's a wash that is, it usually doesn't rain enough even to become an active wash. Um, it is just something that you can see in the ground um, as where water has ran in the past. Um, so no, I'm not gonna be diverting the wash. That's, that's not, um, not a prudent use of time and also it's very far away from where uh, my garden will be. I will, like I say, do rainwater collection off the roof and off of shed roofs and things in the future. It's a very different experience than I think what a lot of people watch on YouTube. A lot of people who do permaculture on YouTube are in places that have a lot more water than here. Um, and so the goal is then, okay, let's capture this water that's falling from the sky and use it, um, you know, via berms and via swales, you know, redirecting water, all sorts of places. And that's great. I will do that. But 
we're talking about four times a year that those systems will work. <laughs> four times a year that I will get rain for a berm or a swell to capture. There is a garden club here. A lot of those people do permaculture. There's a lot of really great people in the area that I can learn from and will learn from. I'm just not at the point yet where I want to spend time on a garden because I have so many other projects that I need to do first. So I have little little garden projects. I'm trying garlic out in a container, things like that. Um, but really a garden is going to take a lot of work also because of animals. Like I, I can't just go and till something in the, into the ground and plant it. It will be gone immediately. Um, the animals will all eat it. The rabbits and the squirrels I have a lot of wildlife for being in the desert. Um, so basically anything I put up will have to be protected. We'll have to have a significant fence, which is time and money. Basically, I want to put a lot of work up front to make a system that doesn't require a lot of maintenance from me. So it'll be a while. I'm sorry if everybody is really excited. I know, I know it's a homestead. I'm calling it a homestead because it literally is a homestead. This house was put up as part of the Homestead Act. It is a homestead. Uh, but I am not homesteading for a little while on it, I would say. Um, I am as sustainable as possible, but at this point in time, it's more of a home renovation channel. <laughs> um, the other thing about permaculture and people were like, well, you should put up berms and you should put up swales. Every single thing I've planted right now has a berm around it. Every single thing. Every single one of the agave in there is in, set in a berm. It has a wall. It is set in. It will collect rainwater and... Also, it, that's just for myself. When I go and hand water it with my gray water in the watering can, it keeps the water there. It doesn't run off. That's kind of what I have to say about permaculture. You will see more of it in the future, I guess, is the, the long and the short of it. Um, I've gotten through a lot of the comments that were genuine questions. And at this point, I just kind of have things to address. There's a lot of things that like people say over and over again. And so I thought I would just like say it here. So for example, a lot of people are really upset about me taking my privacy fence down. First of all, privacy from what? There is no one out here. I'm in the middle of nowhere. The, it, the privacy fence was so that the cops didn't bust the pot farm. That's what the privacy fence was for. Second of all, the privacy fence is falling down. Privacy fence was made by people who don't know how to make a fence. If I didn't take it down, it would fall down. A lot of people are like, okay, well, you should have fixed it. I, it would have been better if you fixed it. Okay, it would have been fine to fix it if I, one, needed a privacy fence, two, if I wanted a privacy fence, three, if it was worth fixing. At this point in time, it's so far gone. Even if I wanted it, I would have to take it down and rebuild it because it's all the posts are rotten in the ground. Everything is falling apart. One last thing that I forgot to say while I was filming, I also got a lot of people commenting that it was helping block wind and dust and I can safely say now that about half the fence is gone that it didn't do anything. Our wind is so strong and the dust storms are so severe. You're just gonna have to trust me when I say that it, it doesn't help and therefore that's also not a reason to keep it around. Am I going to have a fence eventually? Yes, it will be a small garden fence. It's not going to encompass my entirety of my property. That's not ne needed, not necessary. Um, it will be a small area to help keep critters out of the garden, keep, help keep the dog in the yard, um, and, you know, kind of help designate where things are on the property. Will that be a six foot tall privacy fence? No. And at the end of the day, this is my house and what I want goes, <laughs> it's not your house and you don't get really an opinion on it. I appreciate people giving suggestions and things like that. But like I said, you, you don't know where I'm at. You don't know that there has not been a tire track on my road that isn't mine for eight months. Uh, another one, oh, you need to clean up around the house so there's no room for snakes. This was when, when I had the snake on the patio. I would love to not have things on my patio. I would love that. But I need a shed in order to do that. And I just priced out the materials to build a shed. And it's about $2,000. So if you want to donate $2,000 for me to have a shed that I can put all this crap away in. Great. Otherwise, like I'm keeping it as clean as possible. And I every time I open my door, I look for a snake. Uh, the, and that's just how it's going to have to be for now. You know what I mean? One of the other ones that like 
made me laugh basically they have a problem some somebody has a problem that i'm out here by myself that i don't that i'm not married i don't have a husband um and apparently that's making me old and bitter um and not happy i'm out here by choice i have my dog and i'm happy with that you know and not everybody is the same i wouldn't have moved here if i was like oh i'm so sad and lonely why did i move here to the desert i'm so sad and lonely all by myself you know what i mean I'm sure some people don't think things through that much, but I do. <laughs> I wouldn't have moved out here if I thought I was going to be sad and lonely living out in the middle of the desert by myself. But there's a lot of comments. The vast majority of comments are so nice. People are so supportive and so nice. I even saved one here um, to read to you guys. You're a fortunate young woman to own a house, even one that needs so much work. I 100% agree. I'm not one to put like conspiracy theories or political things on the internet. I know a lot of people start watching homesteading videos and channels and then those channels go down a rabbit hole. I'm not going to do that. I'm not one of those people who are going to do that. All I'm saying is based on market trends, because again, remember, I'm a, I'm a finance person. Based on market trends, I'm not sure if I could ever afford a house ever again. You know, this I feel pretty strongly and I really hope that I'm wrong but I really feel strongly that this might have been my one opportunity to, to ever be a homeowner a homeowner in a place that I want to be you know um not just like oh I'm settling for this because it's the only thing I can do this is where I want to be and this is a house I'm inspired by and want to be in full time and and have as a home base to use it with the van to travel in the future um and retire in i do feel very fortunate i feel very fortunate that i was in a position to be able to jump on this house when i found it even with all the work that it needs i in my head have the grand plan i have every single inch of this it, it's like a painting in my mind i already know where everything is going and how everything's gonna look and it's just a matter of me having the time and the money to be able to execute that that's kind of what the YouTube channel is, is, is you guys following along as I am able to execute my vision on this property and this house, this homestead, this land. I know that like me talking about kind of the negative comments earlier might sound like whining. I know a couple people felt like my intro in my one year uh, recap video was whining because I was talking about, oh, I didn't get all the things done that I wanted to get done. I've been really hard on myself, things like that. Felt like whining. Um, ultimately I can't influence how you perceive me um I am who I am I'm putting myself out on the internet and you guys are gonna see me as you're gonna see me and uh just know that I do count myself very fortunate I don't try to be a whiner or a complainer <laughs> um so if it comes across that way I don't intend it to really at this point this is about me building a retirement um this is me having a piece of land in a place that I'm inspired, in a place that I want to be, I'm just trying to make a house for myself. I'm just trying to make a home. Little homestead in the desert. <laughs> I don't know how much people pay attention, but if you noticed, all my projects have been just me shoveling things or me using reclaimed materials and stuff like that. It's because if I do projects that don't cost money, then that means I'm saving up money for other things. Uh, and other projects in the future. A couple of people have, you know, reached out to me and said, hey, can I buy you a cup of coffee? If you want to help out below, the link is there for you. Like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a sellout. I'm not trying to, you know, um, make anybody upset that I'm like pandering or, or begging for money or anything like that. I just genuinely have people asking me for a place that they can donate and buy me a cup of coffee or help me with this project, help me with that project and things like that. So I wanted to provide them a place they could do that. I'm not going to look a gift horse in the mouth. If people want to help, I, I'm not going to say, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, you can't do that. So that's basically the list. And therefore that's basically the video. I am totally enjoying the sun. It's cold, but this is nice and sunny. I'm in the wind block from the house. Like the, the wind isn't getting me here. So it's been really comfortable talking to you guys for a really long time, uh, but I'm sure you're tired of hearing me by now. So I am going to go full disclosure for you guys. Videos are definitely going to take a break around the Christmas time area. Um, and then we'll pick stuff back up in the new year and get going on projects and everything. 
Um, in the meantime, if you like to follow more day-to-day -day stuff, you're welcome to find me on Instagram. I do post some more like small day-to-day -day things there. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this little sit-down video. I know that these types of videos aren't everyone's cup of tea. Um, it's kind of boring to just sit here and watch me talk for a long time. I get it. Um, so if you didn't love this type of video, don't worry. Uh, this is the only one and we'll get back to projects in the new year and everything. So if you're watching this and it's not 2024 yet, happy holidays. If it's past 2024, happy new year. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the new year.